Hey, this is Mrs. Reichelt, and next up we're going to continue our talk about bones, but we're moving on to the vertebral column. So let's go ahead and get started. Each vertebrae is given a name according to its location. So there are 24 single vertebral bones that are separated by intervertebral discs. So an intervertebral disc, which we'll look at a picture of in a little bit, I think, um, an in intervertebral disc is a flexible cartilage that is able to absorb shock, but it also provides for flexibility. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, talk about our memory aid first, how about? So the vertebral discs, or the bones rather, are divided into um, different groupings or different classifications and they are about the same times you eat your major meals. So you normally eat breakfast at 7, you normally eat lunch around 12, and you normally eat dinner around 5. So that's the number of each of those um, vertebral bones. So there are seven vertebrae of the cervical vertebrae. Almost wrote a seven again. Okay, so you have seven cervical bones. You have 12 thoracic bones. And then you have five lumbar bones. And then there are nine vertebrae that fuse to form two composite bones. And those bones are going to be the sacrum and the coccyx. Okay, so we're going to take a little break from the actual bones and talk about some curvatures. So the, the spine has normal curvature. You have one type called primary. Primary curvatures are the spinal curvatures of the thoracic and the sacral regions, and those are going to be present from birth. So those are gonna be present from birth. And then you have secondary curvatures. Those are going to be the um, curvatures of the cervical and the lumbar regions, and those are going to develop after birth. Okay, so here is a diagram of each of the bones. So we have seven of our cervical bones, which take it about here, and then we have 12 thoracic bones, and then five lumbar, and then the last grouping, the last nine make up the sacrum and the coccyx. Okay, so there's a couple things here. Notice that each bone has a letter and a number associated with it. So C1 would be here, C2, C3, C4, and then once you get all the way to the thoracic, you're going to have T1 all the way through T12. Then you're going to have L1 all the way through L5. So that's how you kind of keep those in order. You will not have to memorize um, each individual number associated with them with the exception of a couple of them. So here is our typical vertebrae. This is a superior view. So this is a what a um, all of the vertebrae that we're going to look like or, or look at are going to be modifications of these. Some of them will look exactly like this. Okay, so we have the vertebral arch right here, the spinosis process, which is one point there, the lamina, which is right here, the transverse process, the superior articular, um, articular process and um, facet, which is right here, so the facet is here, and then the process is going to be what I circled, okay? The pedicle is right here, the vertebral foramen is right in here, and then the body. So we're going to go into some specifics, okay? So the only two vertebrae that you're going to have to know exactly what number and what name there are, are these two. So this is C1. C means cervical. 
one means it's the first one, okay? So it's going to be this one at the very top. Okay, so this one is also called the atlas, okay? So the atlas, um, we have a transverse process, we have a posterior arch, and then you also have an anterior arch. Now the reason that you have to know each of these is because there's they look like their own, okay? You, the first and second um, of the cervical vertebrae is what's going to allow for the rotation of your neck, um, your head and neck, I guess. So the atlas, um, some big things to know about the atlas, which is this top one. Atlas has no body, okay? There's no body to the atlas. In addition, the atlas allows you to nod yes. Um, so allows you to nod yes. So this motion right here is going to be your work in your atlas. Then let's go ahead and move down to the bottom one here. So we have our axis. Okay, the axis is C2. C means cervical, and then it's the second one. You have the transverse process here a dense, the, a little tiny body, okay? Then you have a facet, but it's located on the superior articular process, and then you also have a spinosis process, okay? A um, couple of things about the axis, is this going to be a pivot rotation? So it allows you to pivot, and it's also going to be what allows you to shake no, so. You can nod no with that one. Okay, now we're into the thoracic vertebrae. So you have um, cervical first, then thoracic, then lumbar. So the transverse process, um, the body, we're not going to go through each of these individually, uh, but here are some pictures of these. Um, you can take notes on your study guide again if you don't want to draw all of these out. And then we get to the lumbar vertebrae, okay? So again, the major difference um, between how they appear is that the thoracic are gonna be a lot smaller. Um, the, or, I, the thoracic will be smaller compared to the lumbar. They'll be larger than the cervical. So the lumbar, if we look at the body of the thoracic, which let me go ahead and see if this works here. So the thoracic is kind of more circular shaped. Um, and then when we get to the lumbar, you'll notice that it is wider, just a little bit different of a shape, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and continue on here. Okay, so now we're getting into our last little section. So we have um, the coccyx and the sacrum. So first up, the sacrum is formed by the fusion of five vi um, vertebrae. So this is going to be the sacrum. And then the coccyx is formed from the fusion of um, the third to the fifth vertebrae, uh, also known as the tailbone or the remnant of that tailbone. So the sacrum is made up of from here to here, and then the caustic is right here. Okay, our last little bit here, the bony thorax. The bony thorax um, forms a cage to protect major organs, um, organs like your, um, I almost said like your ribs. <laughs> uh -huh organs like your heart and your uh, lungs. Um, this consists of three parts. You have the sternum. The sternum is the fusion of three bones. And I can already tell I did not leave myself enough room. So the sternum, fusion of three bones. Those three bones are the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid. Okay, so the sternum, the ribs, and then true ribs are the pairs 1 through 7. False ribs are pairs 8 through 12. And then floating ribs are pair 11 and 12. 
And then the thoracic vertebrae are also make up a part of the bony thorax. And let's go ahead and look at a picture here. Okay, so we have our true ribs. The, and our true ribs are going to, all of our ribs are here, are going to connect um, to cartilage. We have the manubrium, which is here. We have the body, which is this right here. And then we have the xiphoid process, which is right here. Okay, um, so we have our ribs, 1 through 7 are true ribs. Our false ribs are 8 through 12. But the last two of those are going to be known as um, floating ribs. Um, and that will wrap up uh, the rest of the axial skeleton.